Hello everyone, welcome to English 2, Unit 6. We're going to continue today with some language leading up to the, uh, <clears throat> the halfway point of the, of the semester. We're going to go through uh, pages 44 to 48 today in your textbook. Uh, if you uh, did not bring your textbook, of course, you can uh, just watch along with the ebook here. Uh, but your classes are set to resume, so you should think about getting a textbook if you have not. In today's lesson, we're going to look at uh, comparatives and superlatives. Okay. Uh, I think you have already studied this in high school, so it should be a review for most of you. Um, so it should be a review. Uh, and when we're finished today's lesson, you should be pretty good at this. Okay. Uh, let's start as we usually do on page 44. We're going to be looking at some vocabulary. Okay. On page 44 at the top, you have a map. We're going to be looking at a lot of uh, geophysical uh, vocabulary today. All right. Uh, the vocabulary words are here on the left-hand side. Uh, some of these may seem familiar, and many of them are common. Uh, icebergs, ocean, desert, forest, islands, rivers, lake, mountains, peninsula, plains, and glaciers. Okay. So again, some of these may seem very familiar. Maybe you've uh, seen these words before. Uh, and certainly you would have uh, common English words, uh, sorry, common Korean words that would uh, be translated from that. Okay. Uh, but maybe all you need is a picture. Okay, so on this map, you're going to see various uh, physical geographic uh, criteria or elements, and you are going to match the letter with the word. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pause, and you're going to pause the recording, and you're going to match the uh, letters with the vocabulary here on the left. Okay. 연결하세요. Okay, that should give you enough time. Uh, of course, with all vocabulary, if you have access to the ebook, you can use the word cards. Okay, it gives you the form and a picture of the meaning. Okay, so you can go through each of the vocabulary words. Okay, and see if you uh, have any difficulty with the meaning and form. Okay, and of course, if you want, you can. Uh, flip it over and see how the word is pronounced. Island. Island. Not Iceland. Island. Island. Good. All right. Uh, as usual, we'll use the practice activity to review and see how we do. Uh, now, looking at the picture you may see many things that you recognize uh, these uh, pieces of ice in the ocean are icebergs so it's a large piece of ice floating in the ocean now according to the picture which one is the ocean I think that's K okay. looks like I'm correct uh, the desert Desert, is, as we saw in the uh, flash card, is a uh, dry area. Uh, it doesn't have to be sandy, but most deserts like the Gobi or the Sahara are very sandy. Okay. Uh, the answer I'm going to give for the, uh, the Arabian Desert, the empty quarter. Okay. Okay. Looks like I got that one correct too. All right. Forest, um, forest really a, a group of trees, maybe a large group of trees. Um, and 
And there doesn't seem to be many trees, just individual trees on the map. But I'm guessing the answer they're looking for is this collection of trees in northeastern Siberia. So it should be C right there. Good. And three for three. Islands, okay? Uh, so a group of islands. Uh, you might see one here. Uh, there's a Sri Lanka right there. And this is what we might call an archipelago uh, south of the Philippines. Uh, this would be Indonesia. And that should be J. Good. Rivers. Okay. So a river is a body of water that uh, goes through uh, the land. Uh, you're familiar with uh, maybe the Nile or the Mississippi or the Amazon. Okay. These are rivers. I think the best example here would be D. Seem to be some rivers and tributaries. Good. Now, lake is a body of water surrounded by land, okay? As opposed to an ocean, which is water that surrounds land, okay? But this is a body of water, this picture here, that is surrounded by land. That's the largest lake in the world, Lake Caspian. And that should be correct. Lake, letter F. Mountains, okay? I think we know mountains. Uh, the Korean word is san, and we can see that here in letter G. Okay, I don't know if there are any mountains in northern China, but uh, we'll leave it at that. All right, only three left. Peninsula is maybe a word that uh, you're familiar with. Uh, uh, we live on one, so that's easy enough. Uh, and that would be, uh, I guess that would be letter I. Okay. Letter H is also a peninsula. It's surrounded by water. And uh, but letter I that would be the, I guess, the Indian Peninsula. Okay. We're going to put that here. Good. Uh, okay. And number 10, planes. 11 glaciers. Well, we're going to start with glaciers. I think that's the easier one. Uh, glacier is a, a large piece of ice that is on land. Okay, so as opposed to icebergs, which are in the water, uh, yeah, a glacier would be on land. Most icebergs come from glaciers and they calve off into the ocean. B and planes will be this open air. Ink. So it'd be E right here. D would be rivers, and E would be plains. It's like a large open area of land. You might see that in uh, Mongolia. Uh, you might see that in Western China, uh, the central United States and Canada. Uh, they have plains. Okay. So it looks like I got 10 out of 10 after the first one was given to me. Okay. So those would be the definitions right there. Okay, so we might talk about geophysical features uh, during the next um, uh, lesson or so. Okay. Um, but we're good with that. Let's continue on. And of course, on ebook, you can review this as many times as you All right, so we're back. And we're going to go down to do the listening activity to start off. First off, we're just going to play the dialogue. If you have a textbook, please close it. We're just going to listen to the dialogue. And from there, we're going to uh, do some comprehension activities. But first, let's just sit back and listen to what we hear in the dialogue. Here's your first listening. Dialogue Module 6. Beach vacations are more relaxing. Listen to the dialogue, then read it with a partner. Work is driving me crazy. Let's take a vacation. What kind of vacation do you have in mind? How about hiking in the Alps? Beach vacations are more relaxing. Yes, but they're more boring. I want to go somewhere exciting. 
Traveling in India is cheaper than traveling in Europe, and the food is tastier. That sounds adventurous. What can we see there? The Taj Mahal is one of the most beautiful sights in the world, and Delhi has the greatest markets in South Asia. I'm in. Let's look for tickets. Good. All right, what did we hear there? We heard two men talking. What were they talking about? Okay. So you can remember uh, what the general subject was, what some of the things they mentioned, some of the uh, topics they talked about. Uh, we're going to answer some questions right now. Some of these you may already know the answer from listening. Okay. Uh, number one, where does Adria want to go hiking? Okay. Now, uh, Adria is one of the men that you heard talking. Okay. Now, I don't know which one is Adrian, Adria, but uh, he's the one who talked about hiking. Now, the, an the information we're looking for is where. Where does he want to go hiking? Okay. So if you don't know which guy, it's the guy talking about hiking. Two, why are beach vacations bad? Okay, or what is wrong with beach vacations? Or what is negative about beach vacations? Okay, so the two men were talking about beach vacations. Uh, one of them said something very uh, positive, very nice. The other one had a criticism. He thought there was something uh, wrong with beach vacations. Okay. What, what was negative about beach vacations? Three, which is tastier, European food or Indian food? Okay. Now, you may have your own opinion, but according to the two men talking, what is the uh, difference? Okay, which one is tastier, food from Europe or food from India? Okay. Number four, what can we see in India? I think they mentioned two things or two uh, sites that were uh, good in India. Okay. Now we're going to play the track twice. Let's see if you can hear the answers to these questions. Here's your first listening. Here's your second listening. Dialogue Module 6. Beach vacations are more relaxing. Listen to the dialogue, then read it with a partner. Work is driving me crazy. Let's take a vacation. What kind of vacation do you have in mind? How about hiking in the Alps? Beach vacations are more relaxing. Yes, but they're more boring. I want to go somewhere exciting. Traveling in India is cheaper than traveling in Europe, and the food is tastier. That sounds adventurous. What can we see there? The Taj Mahal is one of the most beautiful sights in the world, and Delhi has the greatest markets in South Asia. I'm in. Let's look for tickets. All right. All right, so maybe you got, uh, got the information there. Um, so we're going to listen one more time and see if you can figure out the answers for questions f one to four. Here's your third and final listening. Dialogue Module 6. Beach vacations are more relaxing. Listen to the dialogue, then read it with a partner. Work is driving me crazy. Let's take a vacation. What kind of vacation do you have in mind? How about hiking in the Alps? Beach vacations are more relaxing. Yes. But they're more boring. I want to go somewhere exciting. Traveling in India is cheaper than traveling in Europe, and the food is tastier. That sounds adventurous. What can we see there? The Taj Mahal is one of the most beautiful sights in the world, and Delhi has the greatest markets in South Asia. I'm in. Let's look for tickets. All right. Sounds pretty good. Uh, let's go over the answers. Okay, question number one. Where does 
Adria want to go hiking. Okay, so if you open your books to page 44, we can go through the dialogue uh, on our own at our own speed here. Okay. Um, so uh, work is driving me crazy. Let's take a vacation. Adria says, because um, uh, Casey says, what kind of vacation do you have in mind, or are you thinking of? Adria says, how about hiking in the Alps? Okay, so the answer for question number one, where does Adria want to go hiking? The Alps. Okay, so the Alps is a mountain range. Okay. Okay. So the uh... all right. Question number two. Why are beach vacations bad? Okay. So Casey and Adria were talking about these. Um, beach vacations okay uh casey likes the vacations because they are more relaxing more relaxing than hiking okay so that's why he likes beach vacations more than hiking adria has a different opinion adria says yes but they are more boring so beach vacations are more boring okay so Number two, beach vacations are boring, okay. or more boring than hiking, for sure. Okay. Number three, which is tastier, European food or Indian food? Okay. So as I said, you may have your own uh, opinions. Here, Casey is talking about traveling in India is cheaper than traveling in Europe. Okay. So when you see a phrase like this, they're comparing. Okay. So maybe Indian food, sorry, Indian travel, or maybe traveling in India, maybe this activity here is cheap. And maybe this activity, traveling in Europe, is also cheap. Okay. But one has a higher level of cheapness than the other. Okay. So traveling in India is cheaper than. So we use the word than, uh, kind of similar to the Korean word Buddha. Okay. Um, and using that to compare India and Europe. Okay. Good. Now, so travel, Indian travel is cheaper than European travel. Okay. But what about the food? Okay. Okay. So the food is tastier. Are they talking about the food of Europe or the food of India? You can probably tell most by the word and right here. Okay, so and they're using to describe uh, the traveling in India is cheaper and the food in India is tastier. Okay, if this was European food, he'd say something positive about India, but uh, then he'd say something negative about India. Okay, but since he's using and, we know these are both positive things. Okay. Traveling in India is cheaper than traveling in Europe, and the food in India is tastier than food in Europe. Okay, so tastier than. Okay, good. All right, and for number four, okay, we're talking about what sites can you see in India? So uh, this is the first one I mentioned, the Taj Mahal, maybe the first thing that people think of when they think of India. And also, he mentioned Delhi, okay? Or more specifically, uh, the markets. Okay, so there may be some outdoor markets, maybe some indoor markets, okay? But according to Casey, the markets in Delhi are the best in South Asia, okay? So Sri Lanka, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, those countries, probably find the best markets in India, but not in Mumbai or Calcutta, uh, maybe in Delhi, okay, near the new capital. Good. Okay. So that's some information about uh, traveling, uh, comparing uh, activities, whether it's hiking or going to the beach or places. We talk about Europe or India. Okay. So we saw some of the structure uh, that was used uh, and we're comparing things. So traveling in India is cheaper than traveling in Europe. Okay. Um, 
So you see that. We see a, an adjective like cheap, uh, and they slap on a suffix, er. That makes that compares two things. So traveling here, and traveling here. Which is cheaper? Okay. Well, traveling in India. Which is more expensive? Well, I guess traveling in Europe. Okay. They seem to be the opposite. Okay. Now we talked about here food that is tastier. Okay. So the food in India has more taste or better taste than food in Europe. Okay. So they both have levels of taste, okay, but there's just more of it in India. Now we sometimes use the word more when we're talking about other adjectives. Okay. So relaxing is an adjective, just like cheap. Sometimes with adjectives, okay, if you're going to make them into a comparative, sometimes you add an ER and sometimes you just put more on the front. Okay. Why is that? Why do, why is it one way for some words and another way for others? Okay. For that, let's go to uh, page 45 and we can uh, look at the top at the grammar activity. So basically, it's laid out here at the top of page 45 okay, in the grammar focus. Okay. You have two types of comparative styles. Now, as I said before, uh, what happens is you take an adjective and sometimes you add an ER or sometimes you use the word more. Okay, so that's type one and type two, I guess. Okay. And you can see that here, uh, old. Uh, you might have two old things, but one is older. You might have two large things, but one of them is larger than the other. Okay. Same with big and busy. Okay. Um, but also, uh, we have words like funny, narrow, and clever. Okay. Over here, you have words that are appreciated by the word more. The adjective handsome Okay, you might have two handsome people, but uh, one of them is more handsome than the other. Okay. Uh, you might uh, have two careful people, but one is more uh, careful than the other. Okay. So you're comparing two different people. Also for people, uh, for beautiful things or interesting things or intelligent things, maybe if you're uh, comparing two of them, uh, one is more intelligent than the other, more beautiful than the other. Okay. Good. Now, what's the difference? Why ER and more? Okay. Well, I think that's explained here on the side. We have one syllable, two syllables, or more than two syllables. Okay. So you can see here, um, if you have a, an adjective that is one syllable, and a syllable means that it just has one sound. Okay, uh, so this would be uh, old, large, big, <laughs> and apparently uh, busy is one syllable, it's uh, two syllables. Okay, so those ones have an ER ending, uh, they're never, never given, uh, a, a, never preceded by the word more. Just like down here, words with or adjectives with more than two syllables. Okay, uh, beautiful. That's three. Interesting or interesting. Uh, those have three or four uh, syllables. Intelligent. That's four syllables. Okay. So these adjectives have many syllables, and they're always preceded by more. Never by followed by ER. Okay. Okay. So that's an easy rule to remember. Uh, what might be a bit confusing is our adjectives with the word uh, with two syllables, like funny, narrow, clever, handsome, careful, complete. Okay. So the general rule, uh, you can see here with also with busy, okay, why busy and funny are classified different, but um, these are two syllables and they end with an E sound. 
okay, with a, also with a vowel sound. Narrow also has a, ends with a, a vowel sound. It doesn't end with a vowel, but the W is silent. So narrower. Okay. Uh, also, cleverer. All right. Uh, is followed by er. So these are really exceptions to the rule. Okay. But usually, if you have a a two-syllable word that ends in y, like busy, funny, uh, pretty, silly, they are followed by the uh, followed by er, whereas everything else is preceded by more. Okay. okay. Hope that's helpful. Uh, we're going to finish off the uh, first lecture with uh, an act speaking activity at the bottom. So those are just simply comparatives. You can use the same with the uh, superlatives. Okay. So again, if you're comparing two things, okay, use a comparative. She is older than he is. Okay. Uh, your car is larger than my car. Okay? So you're comparing two things. But if you've got more than two things, then you use a superlative. Okay. Okay. Uh, so she is older than he is, but uh, of the three of us, I am the oldest. Okay, so you're comparing not just two people, but three. So we use a uh, superlative form. The rules are the same, just the words are a bit different. Okay, so instead of ER, it's EST. And again, if you have to substitute a Y, uh, you can put a letter I in there for busy or funny, silly or pretty. You can substitute an I, slap on an EST. For two-syllable and three-syllable words, or more-syllable words, uh, we substitute more for most. Okay, so the difference between comparative and superlatives, uh, if it's just two people, and then if it's for superlative, if it's three or more people. Okay, Get a plus sign there. Good. Just comparing that. Um, and... Also be aware for comparatives and superlatives, some of these very commonly used uh, adjectives uh, have their own comparative and superlative forms. Okay, so these would be irregular. So you'd have to memorize these words. It's not good and gooder and goodest, although these words do end with uh, er and est, it would be good, better, and best. <clears throat> uh, bad or badly. Uh, would have a comparative form worse okay? the two people uh, he is the worst okay um, but of everybody uh, he is the worst okay. um, and all these other forms here too uh, be careful with the uh, far uh, I believe this would be farther for distance and further for uh, time Uh, that ends uh, the first lecture. Let us uh, go on to lecture number two and we'll do some speaking activities.